Hello, welcome. Uh, in this video, we are going to discuss two important uh, uh, results in topology. The first result is uh, very famous as uh, uh, the Brewer uh, No Retraction Theorem. Uh, in this theorem, uh, uh, we consider uh, Bs1 as a subspace of uh, uh, the, uh, the closed unit ball B2. The theorem says that uh, the unit circle uh, S1 is not a retract of the uh, closed unit ball B2. See, uh, the unit circle S1 is not a retract of the closed unit ball B2. You can see in the figure uh, the closed unit ball uh, is given and uh, S1 is also given. Uh, it, is, it, it makes the boundary of that uh, closed unit ball. S1 is the boundary of the closed unit ball. So the question uh, uh, is whether there exists a continuous function f which is defined from this closed unit ball B2 to uh, the subspace S1 uh, such that it uh, it becomes a retraction. Uh, uh, then what is mean by uh, a retraction? A retraction, uh, in order to define a retraction, we need uh, a, a space, a, a big, um, uh, an original given space and uh, its subspace. So let x be a space and uh, let d be its subspace. If there exists a function f from uh, the given space x to its subspace d such that uh, f of a equal to a for each a belonging to the subspace for each member for each point uh, a belonging to that uh, uh, subspace of the given space uh, if uh, it satisfies the if uh, the function f satisfies the condition that it fixes that point uh, uh, yeah uh, that is if f of a equal to a for each a in d then we say that f that continuous function is a, a retraction and uh, the resulting uh, subspace uh, d can be called the retract of the uh, given space uh, under the effect of uh, uh, the retraction uh, retraction function so here to prove this uh, result uh, we suppose uh, just opposite of the uh, statement that we want to uh, prove uh, that is, we suppose that uh, uh, there exists a, a retraction from uh, B2 to uh, S1. There exists a, we, 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 uh, we uh, suppose that uh, there exists a retraction from B2 to S1 and we name that uh, retraction as F. So F is a continuous function which exists from, uh, which is defined from B2 to S1 and that's a retraction. And therefore, uh, for every, uh, for each member of uh, S1, for each, uh, so, so, or uh, if X is an element of S1, then F of uh, X is equal to nothing uh, but X, F of X equal to X, for each X, is X in S1. Uh, now we can define, uh, we can proceed to define uh, a function, a new function H, that will be uh, acting as a homotopy from uh, S1 cross I to S1. But that function, the continuous function can be uh, defined as, uh, see, uh, h of uh, x, comma t, h of x, comma t, because uh, it, uh, it can take uh, um, a point containing two coordinates, x, x belongs to S1 and t belongs to the close number i, then h of x, comma t equal to, uh, uh, the it is, it is defined as, it's equal to f of, uh, f of t plus 1 minus t into x1 see uh, it is uh, the first coordinate uh, first point first point in that uh, uh, um, answered uh, in uh, in the resulting uh, or uh, yeah in the in the resultant fun uh, uh, the answer to that function answer to the action of the function um, will be uh, uh, containing two uh, coordinates See, uh, it's defined as uh, f of uh, um, yeah, f of uh, t plus one minus t into x one and one minus t into x two. So first coordinate uh, takes the uh, expression uh, t plus one minus t into x one. The second coordinate take, uh, takes the expression one minus t into x two, and that's why we uh, we get a, a resulting uh, point answer uh, in uh, in s one as a point of s one. So here uh, the input is uh, uh, the point uh, uh, x1 comma x2 uh, in input contains the point x, uh, x x1 comma x2 x equal to x1 comma x2 which belongs to s1 and uh, uh, t belongs to i. Uh, therefore f is continuous here the function f is continuous why uh, it's because uh, h is continuous. We know that h is continuous, so the function f is continuous, uh, and also uh, since in this function we are using the expression of this type, 
uh, the function f will be continuous. And also we can verify that h of, h of x0 using this expression we can verify that h x comma 0 equal to f of f x1 uh, comma x2 it's a simple exercise to uh, write it uh, uh, separately write it and uh, simplify that expression you know to uh, to get that final answer equal to or uh, to show that the final answer equal to f of x1 x2 so h of x0 uh, in h x0 uh, uh, to obtain the value of h of x0 you can use this uh, expression and in this expression you can uh, substitute the t uh, equal to 0 so here you can sub uh, put the t equal to 0 uh, here you can put 0 and then 1 minus uh, 0 and then we get uh, x1 here so f of x1 first uh, first coordinate is x1 and here when you put, when we put uh, t equal to 0 we get uh, 1 into x2 so x2 we get there and therefore f of x1 x2 uh, but f of x1 x2 x2 equal to um, equal to f of x. Why? It's because uh, x belongs to v. Uh, we know that x is taken from s1. So as x as x belongs to s1, uh, uh, using the property of the function f, uh, because it's a retract it's a retraction. So f of x1 x2 equal to f x equal to x. Then uh, h of x one x x one h of x one uh, can can be uh, simplified to uh, to obtain that uh, equal to f of uh, one zero, uh, but f of one zero uh, equal to one zero uh, using that uh, the same reason using the same reason uh, which is used in the uh, in the previous step. So f of one zero equal to one zero. And also h of uh, uh, the point one zero comma s equal to f of uh, s plus one minus s comma zero uh, equal to f of one zero equal to one zero uh, for uh, every uh, value uh, smallest belonging to uh, the closed interval i. So uh, for uh, irrespective of the variation uh, uh, of s in i, then we get the answer uh, to this expression equal to uh, one. Uh, the point 1 comma 0 and this shows that h is a contraction therefore uh, and therefore h is a contraction and then um, uh, okay now let's uh, it's it's it's, uh, it's very important uh, to recall that uh, definition of a contraction at this point so uh, uh, using the definition of the contraction uh, of a contraction function we uh, can uh, say that applying that uh, definition of the contraction function we can say that the uh, function h is a contraction therefore s1 uh, is contracted then since h is a contraction uh, the uh, the space s1 uh, is contractible to uh, s1 is then contractible to the point 1 0 so applying that uh, definition of the contraction we can uh, now we can say that s1 is now contractible to uh, the point 1 0 and but uh, at this moment we have to say that it is a contradiction why uh, why uh, why why should we say that it's a contradiction? Uh, it's because of uh, the theorem of 5.7. The theorem 5.7 uh, says that uh, if S1 is a contraction, uh, or if if it is contractible to, if S1 is contractible to the single point 1 0, then uh, the fundamental group of uh, uh, S1 uh, must be uh, isomorphic to the fundamental group of the single point. But you know the sing, uh, fundamental group of the single point is the trivial group. It contains only uh, the element but uh, we have already we have uh, established that or we have proved that uh, the fundamental group of s1 uh, is isomorphic to uh, the uh, additive group uh, uh, of integers and that's is that uh, is can never be uh, isomorphic to uh, the trivial group <coughs> So due to this, uh, we have to say that uh, what we have obtained here is a contradiction, and therefore S1 is not. Uh, uh, as as we have obtained the contradiction, uh, the statement that we have uh, very uh, carelessly taken uh, uh, that the statement is that uh, 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 the S1 is uh, S1 is a retract of. Uh, we have uh, we have uh, suppose that. Uh, uh, we have or we have accepted that uh, very very carelessly we have accepted that s1 is a retract of uh, the closed unit ball therefore we have to correct it uh, now we have to state that uh, the circle s1 is not a retract of the closed unit ball b2 and that is the end of the uh, proof
of the first result next we come uh, we are coming to another uh, another important result the brewer fixed point theorem the brewer fixed point theorem uh, says that uh, every continuous function f from uh, b2 to b2 uh, from uh, that yeah it uh, from b2 to b2 from a from a two dimensional um um uh, 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 from a two dimensional ball to uh, a two dimensional uh, closed ball to uh, itself or uh, to to the same ball uh, has at least one fixed point so let's uh, uh, go through that uh, uh, result once again. So every continuous function, suppose there is a continuous function f which is defined from b2 to b2. So every continuous function uh, f which is defined from b2 to b2. So the here b2, you know, uh, it is the two-dimensional uh, uh, ball. Um, it has at least one fixed point. Here we, uh, to prove this, uh, we suppose that, uh, uh, that on the contrary, uh, we suppose that uh, f from, f is a continuous function from b2 to uh, b2, uh, but also we suppose that uh, uh, f has no fixed point. We suppose on the contrary that uh, the function, there is a function f from uh, b2 to b2, uh, it's a continuous function, uh, but uh, it has no fixed point. And since it has no fixed point, then uh, for uh, for all x in B2, uh, f x and uh, and x must be distinct points. See, uh, because it is uh, because f has uh, according to our assumption, um, based on our assumption, uh, yeah, the function f has no fixed point. Therefore, uh, for every uh, x in uh, B2. If if we consider uh, whichever uh, point in B2, then we have we can say that f x and uh, uh, f x and and x or x and f x are are two distinct points. If they are not distinct, then there exists at least one uh, point. Uh, they are same. So that uh, is not possible according to our uh, uh, this assumption. Okay, for uh, for uh, x in B2, for then uh, you know. Uh, um so we we take an x in b2 uh, for x in b2 uh, we consider uh, the half line since for every x uh, uh, for every x this is true fx x and fx are distinct so for uh, one such uh, x in b2 uh, we consider uh, the half line from uh, fx through x you can uh, refer this figure uh, see mm, any uh, you can take an arbitrary arbitrary x uh, in b2 uh, and uh, that uh, for that uh, for that x its uh, image uh, fx uh, its image under the function f will also be a member of b2 because the function f is uh, defined from b2 to b2 so that for that function you know they are different they cannot be equal so uh, they are two different points and now you can join these two points x and uh, fx and then it can be further uh, extended since x and fx both belong to uh, b2 you can join them first and then it can be extended uh, in this direction it can be extended so the line segment you know uh, the line must start uh, the line the drawing of the line must start at the point fx and then it come it should come to uh, x and then it can be extended to uh, meet that uh, boundary of the uh, unit ball at the point hx see uh, you can call this point hx and that is the meeting point of the line with the uh, boundary uh, the outer circle and then it can be uh, further extended uh, uh, to infinity thus we get the half line and this is the half line and that we are, uh, are considering here now it is clear that uh, how that half line is uh, uh, is determined or or drawn uh, in this figure okay now Coming to back to our discussion, um, here hx uh, denote the uh, denote the intersection of the uh, half line with the uh, boundary of the circle S1. Then h, then we consider the uh, function h from uh, b2 to uh, S1. See, this way we can define the function h. 
we get a function in this way we can define a function considering uh, since uh, we have arbitrarily chosen x and we can uh, in a similar way we can define uh, or we can determine uh, po uh, functions uh, or the points for for each and every uh, each and every um, uh, point of uh, b2 uh, in, uh, in in a similar way we can uh, find the intersecting points and those using these intersecting points we can define a function and that function is uh, called h and then uh, h is a function defined from b2 to uh, s1 and this function is clearly 1 2 we get a function uh, considering the intersecting points and that function is uh, h that is a function defined from b2 to s1 see uh, how and you can vary this uh, the choice of x uh, we, since we have initially we have chosen an arbitrary x we can uh, vary the uh, point x and in a similar way we can uh, find the half lines for each such choice of uh, point choice of points inside the uh, unit, uh, unit circle unit ball b uh, inside the unit ball b okay and then uh, corresponding to uh, this variation in x you know uh, the point hx also will vary along this uh, uh, um, along the boundary say along the boundary of the uh, unit ball uh, and that is the circle s1 and uh, the function it is, it is now clear very clear that uh, the function h is continuous uh, and also it has the property that h a h of a equal to a for all a belonging to s1 that's the function h which is different from b2 to s1 uh, it's on to also it is on to and by direct verification the function h is continuous you can you can feel that this function is continuous and also it has the property that h of a equal to a for all a belonging to s1 that, that also you can very easily verify since f is continuous, see uh, now the definition of uh, uh, f and x, x and f, uh, it says that uh, um, it says that uh, h is continuous, and due to the continuity of the function f, uh, h must also be continuous, and therefore h is a retraction. Thus, h is a retraction uh, from uh, the unit ball B2 on to S1. Finally, what we get h uh, we get h as a uh, uh, h as a retraction of b2 onto s1. But uh, this is actually a contradiction to the previous theorem. Uh, in the previous theorem uh, 5.9, we have uh, stated uh, or the Brouwer in in, uh, in in the previous theorem or in the Brouwer uh, no retraction theorem. Actually, the theorem is Brouwer no retraction theorem. Uh, we we have seen that we have proved that uh, and there is no uh, uh, retraction actually from B2 uh, on to S1 or S1 is not a retract of B2 and therefore we have to correct we have to make the correction that we have uh, correction to the statement that we have uh, uh, accepted here as, as the supposition in our supposition okay we will correct it uh, that means uh, uh, there e there exists at least one point so uh, how can we correct that uh, statement in order to get uh, in order to get rid of that uh, uh, contradiction so you have to make the correction that uh, uh, every continuous function f which is defined from b2 to b2 uh, there must be at least one uh, point uh, in inside b2 uh, such that f of x is equal to x so this is that uh, uh, end of the uh, proof of that uh, uh, result. Uh, therefore, uh, and the, therefore the statement. Let's again, once again, read that statement. Every continuous function f which is different from b2 to b2 from the two-dimensional uh, ball uh, to itself has at least one fixed point. So that is the end of that uh, result. It's an important result. Thank you. Thank you for listening.